All right, guys, well, Bruce brought us some goodies again today. Of course, we always have to start out with my girl here. I love her so much. This is, of course, Jasmine, which we, uh, we have seen a bunch of. What a beautiful snake right here. This, of course, is the Leucistic Monocle Cobra. Absolutely wonderful. Come on, girl. Come on now, don't be silly, you silly monkey. Look at her, so she's a little bit more feisty than she used to be. Remember when she used to not even hood up when you mess with her, she was so absolutely tame. Well, she's getting a little bit more feisty these days, but today she seems to be in a pretty good mood. But we've seen her quite a bit, and Bruce, she's getting big, huh? Dude, oh my God, she's like huge now. <laughs> like, I know. She's almost at that breeding age, you know, which is really cool. But again, you always have to be a little bit careful. She's being a sweetheart today. Last time she was here, she was hooding up. She was going all over the place and stuff like that. Just get, yo, come on, little girl. You know that you can't be coming at me like that, you little monkey, you. So absolutely incredible. But she's a, she's a, come on, girl. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh my gosh, what a beautiful snake, huh? Oh yeah. Right. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, little monkey. Stay over here. God. You know, the more I get to know her, the uh, more I'm familiar with her and kind of can read her actions and stuff like that. There's that little bit of a hood right there. Absolutely wonderful. Look at this. But again, we've seen Jasmine plenty. The thing that Bruce came in with today is a new one. So let's go ahead and set Jasmine down for a second. Come on, little girl. There you go, sweetie. Oh, there you go. Whew. Tell you what, love this But Bruce. You brought this one in. Now, I don't know this animal at all, so I have no idea what it's going to be. Oh! This, this one's a cutie. <laughs> this one's a cutie. I like this one. A cutie? It's actually, she's actually really sweet once you get her out. I'm telling you, she's going to be even better than Jasmine. Better than Jasmine, huh? Ooh, look at this girl. So what's the morph on this one? So this is a solar pastel. A solar pastel. So this is both a pattern and a color morph here, obviously. You know the pastel, obviously, yeah. but the solar is basically all that is. is if you were looking at a normal monocle and you see there's a white circle and a black circle in the middle, we take that black circle away, it's typically the solar. Now gotcha. these come variable, obviously, but that, but this one was very obvious if you look actually in the back of her head right here. See the hood? Right there, that little hole right there. That's her, uh, that's that, that's a little monocle or whatever. So it would, since it's absent, that makes it a actual solar. A solar, gotcha. And so is the solar, is, is that a, uh, like a, a dominant type of thing or is so that? My understanding is that it is a recessive trait. Recessive um, trait, okay. I'm very, very, very new at the, uh, co the color morphs of, uh, and genetics of, of, of cobras. So that's a, that's gonna be one I have to figure out uh, when I breed her actually. <laughs> now the thing I've just noticed, I, cause I did look that she is definitely a girl. How are you gonna breed the two girls together? <laughs> so, so when I'm thinking this, there might be another cobra in your future, right? So I, I am actually in the market. A friend of mine is actually good planning on uh, selling me a blizzard, a male blizzard. Oh, a male blizzard would be perfect. So yeah. uh, pairing this one up with her it would actually make not only more blizzards, but potentially other really cool, cool colors and more in combos and stuff like that. I would love that solar to come out, maybe an albino too. I would love to see yeah. how that looks. Wow, that's amazing. So a couple really cool elapids. Again, uh, like I always mention the disclaimers, be careful out there, guys. I mean, we can handle elapids because we know what we're doing. We've been doing this for a long time. And uh, listen, I've been keeping snakes, venomous snakes, or at least working with venomous snakes since I was 15 years old. And uh, I still don't, you know, take them lightly at all. As a matter of fact, every time I'm working with them, I'm really thinking about things. It's like, the fact is, is that when you do get bit, you know, the consequences are so dire, right? So the thing that I really love is the fact that I have worked with venomous snakes for all my life and I've never really been bitten. And I'll be totally honest with you, you know, I've never even thought I've had a close call. That doesn't mean that, you know, I haven't had a close call. To me, I always felt like I was in complete control. But again, I think that it's really important when people see, you know, guys like Bruce or myself or any of the guys, Chandler, Will, Tyler, any of these guys handling these things, you know, that doesn't mean that you should go out and do them because if you get bit, it's really a terrible thing for the hobby, right? We don't want to see the hobby get kind of negativity towards us. So always play it safe. And these guys are very dangerous animals. I mean, they're amazing that if you work with them and you really put the time in you can work with them very safely and you don't have to worry about it but at the same time I don't want anyone out there watching us doing this and you know whether we're picking it up or or like Bruce's you know with the neck and so on that you, you got to remember with Cobras is that they don't strike backwards right they always strike forward so you know if you actually have them and you're touching them here you know you're completely fine but if, if that being said I don't want you guys to go out there and do that because I don't want to see anyone get hurt that watches what we do and then says oh well we can do that as well and then you get hurt. So always play it really safe with, when you get these animals. And look at this, this is a perfect example. See what she's doing right now? She's actually got my fingers 
and she's coiling my fingers with her tail. Now that's when you have to really be careful, right? Because you want to kind of tail an animal, but you don't want them to control you. You want to control them, right? Now thankfully, this girl is an absolute sweetheart, so you don't seem to have to have any problems, but she still is packing quite the wall up there with cardiotoxin, neurotoxin, I mean myotoxin. You've got a lot of things going on with the snake you do not want to get bit by. But Bruce, this is an absolute beauty, man. I think I love her even more than I love Jasmine. I can't I can't blame you. Now Jasmine, you know, you can't can't not love your first. Oh my god, but, yeah, yeah. But this was a, this is definitely one that I had to get. Once it was offered up to me, it wasn't one I was really looking for, but I was just like, dude, I can't I can't say no to this beauty. She's a sweetheart. She's amazing. Okay, we'll put her back. We've got one more cool venomous snake to show you. And of course that venomous snake is this little squam here, the bush viper from Africa. You guys may remember when we actually had your first bush viper yeah, that we had to actually tube and stuff like that. Now this one, when did you get this one? So this one I actually got from the same guy I bought the uh, pastel uh, food here from. But uh, this one right here actually came kind of as a package deal because I wasn't really looking for them. Me and Jessica's anniversary came up, so I was like, uh, this might be a cool first venomous snake uh, for Jessica. Oh, you're such a sweetheart. What a romantic. So. <laughs> right, don't don't give her flowers, get her swamps. Yeah, get her swamps. <laughs> These guys are absolutely amazing, obviously. Uh, and it's interesting because there's a lot of like polymorphisms as far as colors go. Oh my god. Yeah. It's like there's a ton of different colors. I like the jet black ones. Oh dude, they're 100 percent my oh. favorite, especially with a little bit of green tint on the outside oh. of the scale. It's absolutely it's gorgeous. Right. But this guy is actually really beautiful, especially once you get it into the light. And of course these guys, you know, pack a little bit of venom, but they're not like terrible. I mean it's still not something you want to get bit by. But, uh, but at the same time, you're probably not, well, most likely not gonna die unless you have an anaphylactic shock or something like that. But still, you can see we've taken all the precautions. This is definitely not something you wanna tail because uh, you know it's pretty hard because they're kinda yeah. sharp, they're, they're snappy. These guys will bite in all different directions like we talked about with the Cobra. They really just bite forward and down so you don't have to really worry too much. These guys are kinda all over the place. And now this guy's gonna kind of start moving on me here. He likes, he likes that green shirt, he's going for it. Uh -huh. <laughs> Get out of here. Now, just one eaten for you already or so I have yet I, so I just got him a couple days ago so I figured that's why I brought him up now so I figured while I said well, because I've got some bioactive cages working on oh, right okay, now yeah. so I wanted all the microphone to establish so now that now I finally got a chance to bring them to you guys they're going right into those cages at home nice so they did but they spread but I'm, I'm fairly certain because the uh, the guy that I got him from I have a lot of trust for he I think he's got I think he I think he knows what he's doing with these guys. He's got some pretty healthy snakes. Oh my gosh, look at this. Look at the eyes on them. And again, that scalation is what makes bush vipers so interesting is they have that like ray scale. As a matter of fact, uh, you might see here on my arm right there, got a little bush viper mm -hmm. tattoo right there. So I actually love these guys and they're just such interesting animals all around you know i mean they're just bizarre i've never seen these in the wild i mean i've been in the area that they're from looked for them extensively when i was out there but unfortunately never saw them that would be a treat to one day come across one of these little monkeys in the wild this one's on the run right now but you know hey listen we may not have venomous snakes here at the reptarium yet maybe one day in the future but the truth is at least we can enjoy bruce's venom mistake when they come in let me know in the comments if you enjoy that and i'll put bruce's instagram in down below as well so go show him some love if you want to follow his stuff so as always bruce thanks for bringing in some stuff that anytime, we can play with anytime absolutely awesome nothing like starting the day out with a cobra Woo! I tell you what, good morning, Reptile Army. I hope this Saturday day is absolutely incredible. You know the movement, you know that movement, right? The Reptile Army. Go to reptilearmy.com, do me a favor, get your swag, become our soldiers, go out there and do the work, all right? We gotta convert the world to reptile people. Go to reptilearmy.com, it's a good place to start. They're good. I'm gonna use this as a shield. Oh God. Stop, relax, don't bite me. Okay, you okay? Don't bite me, don't bite me, don't bite me, don't bite me. Here, uh, yeah, what are you doing? Oh my god, Michael, you almost lost it. No. What are you, what are you doing? You cannot take this thing out. Why not? We're literally going to lose it. You just got to be quicker than the animal, Jay. You got to turn on that Jackie Chan sense. Where did she even go? I heard her move. Oh, there she is. I see her little beady eyes. Good job. I got her. Does no. she bite? Yeah, she will. Here, look. Okay. I'm not scared. Shakira, Shakira. Oh, baby, when you talk like that. You make the woman go mad. As you can see, she's still really fast. Every time we try to give her food or whatever, she just takes off. Though we've been working with her a lot. Well, I have. He doesn't even know what she is. Um, it's a so chihuahua. She's getting better because like, oh, please get bit. I'm not going to get bit, but she's got stuck shit on her. Get more and more hands on with her so she calms down. Because when these guys, they get pretty big. He's Googling facts. <laughs> I mean, they get pretty big and hopefully we can get a male. Maybe have some babies like Diddy and Dixie. Who knows? Uh, so 
It's just calming them down because when they get bigger, they do have a pretty nasty bite. Thankfully, we've never been bit by it. Have you been bit by it? No. Nobody's ever been bit by her, so we want to keep it that way. So we're going to keep all of our digits and everything. So uh, yeah, just lots and lots of work. Going great. We'll keep you guys updated. What you doing, Jay? Love you, Dad. Jay's just part of my shot. You know what I mean? You can't do anything without this guy. Love you. When we birthed you, we never <laughs> thought you'd turn out this way. What, lack? <laughs> Remember we got those little baby Egyptian Euro Mastics? Look at how big they're starting to get. And the reason I got these guys is number one, the fact that they're the largest of the Euro Mastics. These guys can get like three foot long. And also, you can see how docile they are. You know Milton, of course, is the other Euro Mastics. It can be all right, but it's definitely a squirmer and likes to run away. The Egyptians become really, really docile, just like this guy already is. And I'm loving them. I mean, it's really cool. They're definitely not one of the prettier ones. They're kind of a more bland, almost look Chuck Walla-ish like. But the truth is, is that they're so cool when they get big. This is gonna be a great educational animal. And even now when people come to the Reptarium, even kids can hold this little monkey, which by the way is named King Tut, of course, Egyptian, right? But nevertheless, he is cool. And look at how chunky he looks. I am falling in love with this guy more and more every day. So I'm standing in the New Caledonia room right now. Um, we haven't really done much more to it since like Brian was building it out and everything. Uh, we did get some more cages, so everything's all filled in now. Since we're still waiting on like all the finishing touches and stuff, I do have a few extra backgrounds that we've had from like the Reptarium. And I'm gonna go ahead and put those in today because I'm excited and I can't wait for everything to get here. <laughs> and it didn't take very long to do or anything, but at least it's something. And uh, once all this stuff dries, I'm gonna come through, hide all the orange stuff you see there. It'll all look like, you know, rock or tree. And maybe we can actually set these up. We won't be able to put animals in until everything gets done, but at least it'll look nicer in here. Obviously yesterday we met with the architects on the expansion and uh, brought up some interesting thoughts and processes. Number one, I was thinking about the existing building here and obviously Diddy and Dixie's cage is in the window. Now the window is gonna change, which makes me think like, what are we gonna do with Diddy and Dixie's cage? Do we, we put that in the window and just kind of change the format there? Or do we actually move that enclosure to where it is maybe double-sided where it's inside? I'm not 100% sure on that, but there's just uh, more things are going through my, my mind as we getting further into the actual expansion kind of when it's starting to feel more real if you know what i mean obviously salt and pepper huge issue for sure i mean they're getting really big they need to go into a larger enclosure in the next six or eight months which is about the timeline that we have the expansion maybe a little sooner if we're really lucky so we have to build some giant enclosures for them but the biggest issue that we have to deal with now to just make sure that we know it's possible is potentially parking that's what came out of the meeting yesterday is that there's a code here where x amount of people occupancy has to have x amount of people of car space we're a little shy on the parking. Again, we're getting rid of the front parking lot because we're going to be building out that way. So everything is going to be behind us. And we only have about 70 car parking lot. We're supposed to have over 100. So we're going to have to meet with the city next week and hopefully they'll be okay. Now, keeping in mind, we'll never have the occupancy, the full occupancy because we sell limited number tickets, right? So I think we're going to be okay, but that's really the next major hurdle is to make sure that the city signs off on this expansion because if they don't sign off, then we're not doing the expansion. But I'm pretty sure they're going to. We have a good relationship with the city here. They love us, so I'm pretty sure they'll work with us, but uh, hopefully within a week or so we'll have that meeting, and then once we get approval from them, then it's just, it's it's go. We're, it's go time. We're going to make this thing happen, so uh, a lot to think about, and uh, again, even the Diddy and Dixie thing is something that's been on my mind. Big tortoise pen. So much to think about, but uh, it's getting exciting, guys, and uh, I'll let you guys know. I'll keep you up to date. Wish me luck at the city meeting here, hopefully next week. Always a good day when you can play with venomous snakes. There's no doubt about that if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed that type of stuff here's a playlist i'll be playing with some other crazy stuff as well on this side do me a favor hit that subscription button i appreciate you guys and i hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day reptile army remember be kind to somebody and i promise i'll see you in the next one